Harmony Reynolds. I'm a cardiologist at NYU Medical Center, and I'm the director of the Sarah Ross Soder Center for Women's Cardiovascular Research. Heart disease is a serious problem. It's still the leading killer of men and women and of every racial and ethnic group. Well, I hear about women having heart attacks all the time because that's my area of specialty. Most women who have heart attack have some kind of pain or discomfort in the chest, just like men. As we age for men and women, it's still true that you're less likely to have chest pain in the middle of a heart attack, but most people who have heart attack are gonna have some kind of a symptom in the chest or somewhere in the upper body. And what else is different about women? Well, women may have more symptoms when they have heart attack. So if a man might only have chest discomfort, let's say a woman at the same age might have that chest discomfort, but maybe also some nausea or some shortness of breath. That would be somewhat typical. But another thing that's really interesting and different about heart attack in women is that it's less uniform. When men have heart attack, it's almost always from a bad plaque that's broken and caused a blood clot. Now, many women have that kind of heart attack too, but more women will have a type of heart attack where the arteries look open when a standard angiogram test is done, and that's an area of research of mine. It turns out there's a whole laundry list of things that can cause heart attack, and particularly in women, where the arteries look open when we do the angiogram test. So the standard test may not be enough for a woman. We may need to go beyond and learn more. I think that the biggest thing that people can do is to come into the doctor's visit with questions. I think it's helpful to bring a written list and make sure all your questions are answered because when I go to the doctor, I get nervous too. So I think it's a good idea to come in and say, what's my risk for heart disease and what can I do about it? For most patients, it's going to be seven things that you can look at. And these are the seven things that we can take care of. So there's blood pressure, cholesterol, blood sugar, weight, diet, and exercise, which sound like they're all the same thing, but they're not. Having a healthy weight is important, and eating healthy is important, and exercising, and not smoking. So these are the major risk factors along with family and age. And it's important to go over them all with your doctor to figure out what your numbers are and what you can do to make them the right numbers. The take home message for the public of my presentation is how to take action. Their heart disease can be scary, and there's a lot to know. But basically it boils down to knowing a little bit about how heart disease forms and what we can do to prevent it. talk about heart attack in women and particularly what the symptoms are, how heart attack happens, sort of arm you with knowledge so that if something happens to you instead of being afraid, you know what to do. Okay, so we're going to cover symptoms, diagnostic testing, a little bit about how women are different, and some ongoing research studies. So what's a heart attack? When we talk about a heart attack, what we mean is that there is a problem with blood flow to the heart and the heart is not getting its nutrients and oxygen and it leads to cell death of heart muscle that we can't get back. This is typically caused by blood clotting on cholesterol plaque in heart arteries. So this is a schematic of a heart artery. This is where the blood is flowing and this is the yucky plaque that's outside. And for reasons that we don't understand, sometimes the plaque will break. And when it breaks, the part that's underneath is exposed to flowing blood that will clot. And that can completely block the artery and that's going to cause the symptoms that we're worried about and the cell death. What are the symptoms? Well, some heart attacks are really obvious, sudden, and intense, but most of them start slowly with a mild pain or discomfort and with one or more of these symptoms. Chest pain or discomfort. Well, people have chest pain all the time, but what about chest pain makes us think of a heart attack? It's that it's lasting more than a few minutes, but it may be that it's only lasting a minute, but it keeps coming back. That would be something I'd be concerned about. But the discomfort can be anywhere in the upper body. It can be in the jaw, neck, shoulders, back, either arm, both arms, the upper stomach area, anything waist up can be a heart attack. Shortness of breath, which may come with chest discomfort or without it. Patients may have nausea or vomiting, sweating, dizziness, and there may be a sense that something is very wrong, but I'll tell you that many of the patients with heart attack, and particularly the women, don't have a sense that something is terribly wrong, and that can lead to delays in getting good care. So that's why it's important to be attentive to any of these symptoms if they happen to you. There's a myth. People think that a heart attack is going to feel like it looks in the movies. And if you've seen this movie, you know this was a very dramatic heart attack. He's getting ready to get intimate with this young girl and he falls to the ground and rolls around. Well, it's not always like that. They don't always feel like they look in the movies. Most patients will have chest pain or discomfort with a heart attack, but not everybody does. It do might not feel that bad. It might not even really be a pain. It might just be a funny sense that something is wrong. And even if they recognize the symptoms, one of the things that's different about women is that women will hesitate even more to call 911 and get to the hospital later on average, but every minute counts because if there's an artery that's closed, 
The longer it's closed, the more heart muscle dies. So we need to get to the hospital soon and not wait and wonder. And not search the internet. We had a very uh, unfortunate case of a friend of a patient of mine who said that they found the friend dead with the computer open. And what is the internet search open to? Heart attack symptoms. So better to just call. Um, are women less likely to have chest pain with a heart attack? This is something that's sort of out there in the press. Women have different symptoms. Well, yes and no. So this is a very large study with over a million people. And almost half of the patients with heart attack are women, 42% and the remainder are men. And this shows at every age the likelihood of having your heart attack without having chest pain. So you can see that in the age group of 75 to 84, about half of patients, whether men or women, don't have chest pain or any chest discomfort. And as we go younger and younger, more and more people are actually having chest pain. At every age, women are a little less likely to have chest pain with their heart attack. But you can see that age is a much bigger factor. So yes and no. How do we survive a heart attack? Well, don't wait to call for help. Go right ahead and call 911. Get to a hospital right away. Learn the warning signs. Hopefully you were paying attention there. And then if you're not sure, go to the hospital and let a doctor decide. That's what we're there for. We have whole emergency rooms devoted to taking care of people who might be having heart attack or might be having other urgent things. Go and let a doctor decide. We're very happy if we have a false alarm. People say, I don't want to bother the doctor. The doctor's doing something more important. No, the doctor's not doing anything more important than this. If you might be having a heart attack, we want to know. And please don't drive yourself, and don't take a cab, and don't take the bus. Call 911, because if something happens in the ambulance, the emergency medical technicians are equipped to take care of it right away. Taxi driver is not. So what's a typical heart attack? Typical heart attack is from cholesterol plaque, and I'm going to talk to you about less typical heart attack, which is an area of research interest of mine, but let's go through what happens to most people. So here's an artery that's normal. I know it's a little fuzzy because it got blown up. The artery has an inner lining, it's got a muscle layer, and it's got an outer lining that holds everything together. But as we get older, we get some plaque buildup, and the plaque is made up of inflammatory cells and cholesterol and grease. So as that plaque starts to develop, it actually grows into the artery wall. The whole artery gets bigger but there's plenty of room for the blood to flow. So that's a good thing, because there's plenty of room for blood to flow, but the bad thing is that you can have these plaques and have no idea, because it's only in the very late stages that it may block the flow of blood to the heart, and people might feel, let's say, chest pain when they walk around, or might have a stress test that's abnormal. That's only these big plaques, but as it turns out, most heart attack starts here with the small plaques, and we all have them in this room. It would be very unusual for somebody beyond their teens and 20s to have no plaque buildup at all. Many people have several of these small plaques. They're not all dangerous, and there's a lot of research uh, focus going into which plaques are vulnerable, which are the ones that are destined to break and cause a heart attack. And at this point, we don't know. So we try to treat them all with the measures that you heard about from Dr. Jelani. For years, people thought that the artery that you had to worry about was this kind of artery, the one that's like a rusty pipe. And this is very tenacious, this idea. It's wrong, but it's very easy to understand because we get it, there's stuff that builds up and it blocks the artery and now there's not enough blood that gets to the heart. But as it turns out, I just showed you, most of the heart attacks don't start with the artery that's clogged. So most of the arteries that we need to worry about are instead like a raw egg. There's that plaque that's grown out into the artery wall. It's got a lot of gooey stuff inside, the cholesterol and inflammatory cells, and it's got a thin shell that's very fragile if that's a vulnerable plaque. And someday the plaque breaks or the egg breaks and the stuff oozes out and it's a big mess. So if that happens in an artery, then it's gonna cause the blood clot that I showed you on that first slide where the woman was clutching her chest. So how do we change this? Everybody says, well, if I have plaque, I want it to go away. Make my plaque go away. Hmm. I can't make your plaque go away. But we can change it on a microscopic level to be safer for you. And the analogy that I use with patients is that it's a lot like hard boiling an egg. The egg is the same size, but it's totally different inside, and it's not as fragile. And on a microscopic level, when we treat with cholesterol lowering and with diet and exercise, treating blood pressure, all the things that you just heard about, we take a lot of the grease out of the plaque and we calm the inflammation and make the cap over that plaque thicker and less likely to break. So that's what we're aiming for. We don't need it to go away. We just need it to become stable. But in women, there's not just the typical type of heart attack. There's a lot more to think about, and it's just like everything with women, right? On this, these two guys say hi to each other, the subtext is hello. But when two women say hello to one another, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. <laughs> Did she shave her legs? I've, I've seen that outfit before, the whole thing. 
And this is actually true in a sense with heart attack because there are a lot of less common types of heart attack that preferentially affect women. And one of them that I'm very interested in is heart attack with open arteries. So mostly when we do an angiogram test that shows where the blood is flowing, we see that the artery is badly blocked in a heart attack or maybe completely closed. But in some patients, when we do the angiogram test, the artery looks open. And then we don't really understand exactly why the heart attack happened. We may need extra testing. This is fairly common. It happens in up to 150,000 people per year. It's more common in women, at younger ages, in people of African race and Hispanic ethnicity. And it is safer than a typical type of heart attack, but it's still a very big problem with a 5% death rate in a year. And we've learned that this may be the first way that you find this may be at an autopsy. There's a whole set of things that cause heart attack beyond just broken plaque. So sometimes when the arteries look open, there's still a broken plaque. It just happens to be grown outward, and we don't see it as well without extra testing. Sometimes it's a different kind of a plaque that gets sort of shaved off and gets a blood clot on top of it. It's sort of more like a skinned knee than the broken egg. That one we call plaque erosion. And that's something that can even happen to very young women, particularly smokers. Some patients have a coronary artery spasm. I showed you the muscle lining of the artery. Well, that can go into a cramp like other muscles can, and it can close the artery temporarily. But by the time the angiogram is done, if that cramp has relaxed, it doesn't leave a trace. And so we may need extra testing for that as well. Some patients have a different kind of artery break called a dissection, in which there's bleeding into the wall, almost like if you got a bruise, but that bruise is now compressing the artery and blocking blood from flowing. Some people have embolism, where a blood clot starts in one part of the body and it happens to lodge in a heart artery, and that causes a heart attack. Some people have an interesting problem called Takasubo syndrome, which I'll speak about separately, and some have myocarditis. They're not having a heart attack at all. In fact, they're having an inflammation, maybe from a viral illness, and we need special testing to sort that out because it's a totally different diagnosis. Why do we care about which thing? Well, the treatment can be different. The logical treatment for each of these is quite different. If a plaque is broken, we're looking at cholesterol lowering and drugs that stop blood clotting. If there's an artery cramp, we want drugs that relax the muscle wall. If there's a break in the blood vessel wall, we want things that are going to ease the stress on that blood vessel wall. If there's a clot coming from somewhere else, well, we need to find it and use blood thinners. And if there's myocarditis, the inflammatory problem, we don't need any of the usual drugs that we give for heart attack. So that's a really important diagnosis to make, too. And that's how I got into this area. I had a number of women who had unusual types of heart attacks, and they were asking me, what happened? What do I do about it? And I sort of looked like that doctor on the side. I said, uh, I'm not sure. Let me, let me try and go find out. And that's what we're trying to do. So we have a research study called the Women's Heart Attack Research Program at NYU. And Columbia is a major partner, and Dr. Jelani in particular. This is funded by the American Heart Association. And it uses images taken from inside the artery and MRI of the heart to try and piece together what happened in each individual woman. So this is an angiogram, and I know you're not necessarily used to looking at these, but this artery looks very smooth and even. But in this person, at this spot, which I would tell you a cardiologist would say, that spot looks fine. It turns out that there's a broken plaque, and that the outlines are shown here. So this is something where we needed a test taking pictures from inside the artery to get us to the right diagnosis. And an MRI can also show us in fine detail exactly what's going on in the heart muscle. So here there's a white splotch. That white splotch is an area of heart muscle that's died. And we can figure out where that is, put it together, and try and get the right diagnosis. Takasubo syndrome is that other thing I promised to talk to you about. It's also called broken heart syndrome. So every so often you'll hear about this in the lay press. And this is a type of heart attack that, again, preferentially affects women, mostly postmenopausal women that's sometimes set off by a severe emotional or physical stress. Sometimes there's no stress we can point at. It looks just like a heart attack to patients and to doctors, but the area of the heart muscle that's not squeezing, and that's shown here. So that's the heart between beats, and here only this part was squeezing. The rest of it didn't do its job at all. That, if people survive that, it all goes away. So it's actually a very interesting problem, but we don't have time to talk about it this time, so maybe another time. <laughs> If you know anybody who's had this problem, though, we are studying it at NYU, and there's a registry that you can sign up for online, and we'll have research opportunities for those patients. And then I think this is the last thing I'm going to talk about, and that's stress and heart disease in women. You heard a little bit about this, but women with heart disease have higher stress levels compared to men and different types of stress. Women tend to be more concerned about work-family conflict, caregiving. Men tend to be more concerned with job stress. We think that tailoring to women's needs is necessary. And the idea is that we're, we've got a stress management intervention that we're testing in women who've had heart attack. 
and it's supposed to interrupt this whole sequence because everybody has stressors and daily hassles and big life events that can stress you out. But what we want to do is have people feel less that they're overwhelmed and unable to cope because it's that sense of being overwhelmed that leads to emotional and behavioral and even physiological consequences that can lead to heart attack and bad heart attack outcomes. So we have a telephone-based stress management research study for women, and if you know anybody who's had a heart attack, they can be part of this study too. They go into a group by telephone and learn stress management techniques, and we're comparing that to usual care to see if we can make people feel better and have better outcomes. So I think I'll stop there. I know I speak really fast, so if you had any questions, we have a Q&A session. Thank you very much.